All right, Adam, we're starting something new for our 10th episode of the podcast. We've made it. We have not been canceled. I do not have a can, but I've got some cold water. It's I good didn't enough. Expe- I didn't expect to do that, but here we go. It's all right. It sounds good. So cold open question of the week. With the state of national tournaments uh, and the way they are, with how good they're, they're running, would you rather be the 32nd seed in the top bracket or 33rd at the top of the 64-man purple bracket? Are you, okay, so we did not just full transparency. I do not. I don't know. know you're asking me this. That's the point of it. I have to actually pre- <laughs> not just pretend to be shocked, but am kind of shocked. So, are you saying for me specifically, what would I rather be? Yes. Okay. So I can give you a good answer because I think I've been 30 seconds. If I made the cut, I felt like my I I'd done what I've set out to do, and now I can get my ass kicked. Right. Like if I like for me, making the cut was attaboy. So I still feel that was what I but but is 33 probably going to be more enjoyable for my weekend? Yeah, because I think I'll be and again, I suck now in general. So I have to like think about how to answer this. But to me, like I always loved that 30 second match at that point. I'm like, you got nothing to lose. But but also I feel like the and this is something interesting, too. We talked about potentially doing odds again at Worlds, right? So I'll kick back the question with the question. Um, has the gap is the thirty second player in a tournament these days? I'm gonna answer I'm gonna answer your question with a question, which don't ever do, by the way. People fucking hate when you do that. <laughs> is the thirty second player now a much better thirty second player than they used to be? Um, has it changed at all? Right? Does it feel like the gap is shortened a little bit? I, I would say so. I, and I, for example, uh, this week, I, I believe it was Mark Gomez who ended up qualifying 32nd. Uh, Gomez, who's been playing very, very well the last couple of years, qualifying usually in that middle bunch, had a couple of bad rounds, whatever the case was, ended up 32nd playing Paul, or excuse me, playing Jade McGillum, who was also the number one qualifier that I'm saying this because he said it was unexpected. Uh, but Mark Gomez, as 32, beat the number one seed, uh, and, and it's happened before. This is not the first time that 32 is beaten one. We've had um, it in Worlds. Um, it's it's happened a handful there. of times, but it's it's tough because the 64-man purple bracket with the yeah. Worlds pass on the line, There's if you lose that first match, there's uh, so much more golden tea you have to play to kind of climb that ladder. It's a, it's a really interesting question. Yeah, for me, I always felt clearly the 30-second spot has gotten a lot better because I was never – it was never in the wheelhouse that like beat number one, right? Um, so the tournaments are a lot better than they used to be when I played. Uh, but um, yeah, you're right. It's it's a, it's a great question. It speaks to like the competitive nature. This will be a this will be a kind of a world's centric pod in some regard. Oh, there's a lot of things, different things going on. But I just wanted it, to make the cut and then no. be, be zero and two, and then sit there and have a, a delicious IPA it was usually my strategy for Golden Tea tournaments. No, I get that. But we'll talk, you know, like you said, Worlds, St. Louis results, all that and a little bit more. But let's start the show. Well, you are back from St. Louis, right? You are you are back uh, from St. Louis. You were you were out and then you came in and then you were out again. So you <laughs> yeah. a little bit of a whirlwind. Um, we had Sobo on last week in your absence. It was a really good conversation. It's always nice to talk to Steve. People can realize, even if he yells at him at tournament sometimes, he, he, there is a soul in there. There um, is. And I say that because it, I, I appreciate him it's saying true. that. It, running a tournament <laughs> is fucking art, right? And even attending it could be exhausting. So what were your... Uh, I was following throughout... I'll give you my quick interpretation. I was following throughout the week, and you mentioned the, some of the qualifying and some of the other things. But... Um, what were some of your thoughts about just the tournament as a whole? Well, you know, we touched upon it with the cold open question, uh, you know, about that 32nd versus 33, basically the bubble boy of you make the gold bracket or you make the purple bracket. And this has been going on for years where that purple bracket is just stacked with, you know, some of that A plus, you know, B plus talent that when we started in tournaments many years ago, purple bracket was Hey, you're new to the tournament. You don't have as many games or, or reps in. Um, but now it's it, it seems like that field is is almost as stacked in certain tournaments as the top 32. 
Um, you know, Matt Cavanaugh, who actually won the purple bracket, winning his championship uh, world's pass for 2025. A decent player, really good at times, can be like us where you make some mistakes, but um, not, I don't know there's a ton of people that, unless you're brand new, that come into a tournament and say, I'm happy to make the purple bracket. That's kind of my ceiling. Um, and if you're a newer player and that's where you want to be, that's perfectly fine. But for a lot of these guys that have been going to tournaments sure. five, 10 plus years, purple bracket's not you know, the best option for you because frankly in gold, you can go Oh, and two and you get your, uh, your entry fee back, back plus some here. Um, and it's, it's a good way to, you know, if you have a bad round of golden tea, you can at least cover some of your tabs from the weekend. Yeah. It's, um, I don't know. Some of the results were pretty interesting. Again, some of the, some of the results here, it, I think you're seeing in general kind of a new wave of this game going on and you'll still have, it's worlds is such an interesting moment too, because I think a lot of worlds, uh, the power events does this, um, by the way. Yeah. Steve and I addressed the whole pegging thing. I'm not sure if you listened to the episode. Oh, I, uh, yeah. I listened okay. to it on the way to the tournament. So I could jokingly we, we, talk to Steve with, him, uh, with him about it because we, we I knew ripped, that. Yeah. We ripped the bandaid off. I, I yeah. wouldn't say we actually salt anything, but, but I will do a, 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 a better job of consciously not saying peg it. Although it's going to be really, really hard. Um, just call it the national GT tour. That's your there solution. You go. But um, I no, I, I think that we're, as we get close to the worlds, like that is where, in my opinion, you, a lot of these guys named stars are born, right? When it comes to golden tea events. Um, and you look at guys like a Joe Masara who had been a game around the game for a while. And then I remember in worlds watching him play and I'm like, Oh my God, like that, that's not like you start is, to pay attention. Y- 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 yeah. Right. So, um, I think it's, I think it's very, my, my thoughts, my takeaways from St. Louis to, to kind of bridge the gap to worlds is like, I feel like it's a really wide open tournament. I feel like you've got a lot of people like back to the odds. Like when you used to look at that odds board, I have one behind me. Um, and I do want to talk about my new background here, by the way, too, but you, you'd look at that odds board and you'd be like, all right, well here within this area, I think are guys that could win, right? That's how, that's how I would look at it. I don't think well, I can do that anymore, honestly. It, it's a lot more, it's a lot tougher. Uh, you know, a lot of people were looking at Sean Gervais. He took uh, one of the top four spots in Florida, won the Wisconsin Open Tournament, uh, and then he goes 0-2 on Sunday in the gold bracket. You know, uh, Andy Haas, multiple-time world champ. Um, I could tell you probably more the times he hasn't been in the top four than the times, you know, yeah. He just he, he's he's been in the top almost consistently the last five years, if not more, and the national tour side. But uh, he gets beaten by Al Zarel in the first round, which Al's a great player. But Andy Haas is Andy Haas. And I if I asked Al, if I called him right now, he'd probably say I could beat Andy Haas, but I don't expect to beat Andy Haas. Yeah. And and not only did he beat him in the first round, but they eventually met up in the losers bracket and he eliminated Haas. Yeah. That's, so that's, unique, you know, by the way, you don't see that a lot like that. That, Owen, that was Owen two against call me one, off guard. one guy. You can go one and two, right? Like you don't usually, you know, you know like, uh, I don't know. Owen two is, it's just very, very interesting. So, and uh, you know, Mark Gomez, we talked a little bit about him. Like he took that 30 second qualifier spot and ran with it. He ended up in the fifth, uh, fifth, sixth spot with Joe Massara. Now with Joe, this is hometown turf. He's usually in that top four, uh, at least the last uh, three, four years of St. Louis's national uh, tour event. Uh, again, five, six is great for both of these guys. Um, uh, Evan Gossett coming in, uh, beating Paul Taylor to take the third place spot. Paul Taylor, our reigning world champ being fourth. Um, you know, Brian Bernhardt, the king of the hill for the weekend. First time in 20 years since the original players charity championship. Uh, losing, getting double dipped, unfortunately, by CJ Wingler, who CJ has been a name we've talked about for a long time. Like, Hey, you know, this guy could be the future of golden tea. Um, and actually I stand corrected. I had Evan and Paul Taylor flip flopped. Uh, Evan was fourth place and Paul Taylor was third, but, um, Evan Gossett, somebody who frankly, people probably have not paid as much attention to because he's just run bad luck at these tournaments. So it's good to see him in the top four spot as well. Yeah. I, I, I think it, you you get a really exciting event and it's like a really cool um interlude to worlds which uh i don't know about you um it, it's becoming real 
right? Like we're in May. It's at the end of June. Almost the um, middle of May. Almost the middle of May. Um, and all of a sudden, like we are, I could tell within our day to day conversation in the office, it starts to really, really ramp up. Um, just in terms of ensuring that everything is, is going on as planned. And, and yeah, we're doing two events in one. I mean, it's, it's fun. I, I actually love it. I, I get like this nervous energy for this, um, to, to get into the mix, but I could tell you, I, uh, and now to my background, right? So, so in the back, my, like if you're watching on YouTube, wherever you're listening or watching, I have a golden tea back there. Now it, it does drive me a little crazy that the shroud lighting, um, since we started building the Golden Tea PGA Tour cabinet, the lighting in the video is not blue, right? It's kind of like that. It it never it, it never it does, it does look a little weird, actually. And that's All been right. the case for many many years. It's kind of driving me fucking crazy right now. If I'm being completely honest, it's not that color. Uh, it does look good back there. Uh, <laughs> that marquee does. looks like it's been sitting in the GameStop window for 20 years. It's, it's, it's like, It looks no, sun faded. I'm like turning around and I'm like, that is not how this looks at all. Um, we'll, uh, we'll get some can spotlights on there. We'll fix that up for you. Yeah, since a lot, I added my own Keurig in here. Uh, I stole some 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 bottles of wine from, from next door office, not actually stealing them. Yeah, Josh Pick, just, just to be clear. Just to, just to be clear. <laughs> like, let's, um, Thanks, Josh. So we updated the background. I have started my regimen for Worlds training. Now, I'm not playing in Worlds. Uh, I doubt I'll, uh, other than in setup, where you and I are, are fucking around on Rattlesnake Ridge, where I'm going to attempt to shoot a 33 and usually quit after hole seven. Um, and Let's and be honest. We get shoot. to like hole three and say, fuck yeah, this. Yeah, the setup, is, the setup isn't what we wanted. But I am starting my my training regimen to, to really understand the courses better. I need to. Uh, I, I I need to because um, it it helps me out. So this is my way of doing it. Um, I've been doing it between calls. New new season, which I want to talk about, is helping too because um, it's it's like the right time for me to to jump in a little bit. So wh what's the what's the world's vibe for you? And then obviously we have actual world things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, I mean the world's vibe is good. I mean here's the thing. It seems like just like when it comes to trade shows or any type of event. No matter how much planning you do, it never feels like it's enough because there's always something new or different that you're doing. Uh, and that's definitely been the case with Worlds because myself, Andy Coolman, you know, you, even even Dan Scrimetti and some of the, the gaming sales team has been working on various bits and pieces of our, our partnership at the Palms since, you know, late last year. Um, and so it's, it's going well. We're getting, like you said, we're a month and a half out. Uh, starting to get the scares a little bit. It's the it's the little yeah. stuff. Hey, do our posters look good? Do they get printed the right way? Let's pack them up. We got to start packing up games here. That's scary. Um, are we shipping all the games? Are we getting some from operators? You know, it's the the last minute minutia, I guess, of the event. Do we have power cords? Did somebody steal them out of our our boxes in the warehouse? Uh, like you know, going to set up another trade show. But it's good. It's right now. It's just you know, finalizing the schedule, which I'll run through here in a little bit. Um, making sure people get out to Las Vegas to just join us, hang out, have drinks, but also try and qualify, you know, both mobile and arcade have last chance qualifiers this year. And so, um, I'm very interested. I don't know if it's going to be good, bad, or ugly, or a little bit of everything, uh, to see and hear what people's response to target rush qualifier is versus closest. Yeah. In. Uh, after like the fifth or sixth complaint, I'm just going to point them in your direction and say, talk to this guy. Um, and then I'm going to take my parachute and run. Oh, I'm going to be at the Conor McGregor fight all weekend. So good luck. <laughs> uh, I, I don't That's know. Right. I don't know. I don't know what you Damn yeah, it. Dana luck. White just no, I send mean, us like, a DM look, back. Uh, look, it's like, we're going to keep trying things. And, and like, I don't know, like the, the, the thing we don't want to do is just make everything status quo. Like I, I never want to do it. Uh, I will say the tournament format, double a limb, You'd be hard pressed to find a better tournament format for the actual event, in my opinion, that accommodates our players, the space, and an, a meaningful event. I, that, that's I'll, I, I will say that. For this thing, no, this is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be quick. It's supposed to be. Uh, we're we're going to do some other stuff. I think in the room to make you know add some you know uniqueness to this specific event too. So no, I mean. Just come hang and yeah, come qualify too. There's a lot of money up for grabs. You want to be a part of it, and yeah, we'll keep messing around with formats and 
that you know what what people will obviously listen to feedback and just from there but no i mean that that's part of the fun of it too um i and i'm really looking forward to being at the palms um I liked last year's venue quite a bit. I, I did. I liked this. I liked the space. I liked the openness. What's the name of it? I should like it so much. Notoriety. I Notoriety. I liked it so much. I forgot the name. I'm I, just glad I, that I remembered when you yeah. asked because I'm the, I'm notorious for forgetting. Uh, so I liked it a lot. But the one thing that I didn't love was that it wasn't on site, and 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 it was hot. And so doing that walk every morning in old Vegas, um, is, it can be a little challenging. We're closer to the strip we're in the hotel. Uh, it's a more intimate feeling. I mean, I remember at the Orleans, um, the comparison I've used is like caddy shack is when it's, when it's caddy day at the country club and like fucking shit's flying it. That's what we're going to do to the palms. And I love it. We yeah. are that we are. And I'm saying this, I'm not, I'm one of them. We, I, we want to take that place over. We want to be, we want to be the people in there. And I I enjoyed that. You get out of there, you walk down the hall, literally. You and I have seen the venue. You're you're on the casino floor when you go out there. If you're in between matches and you want to go play a slot machine, you can do that. I did it. You did it. We know you can do that. Um, yeah. So I, I do <laughs> love that part of it. It makes the entire experience a little bit more intimate. It also makes our job a little harder because you really can't escape it. But that's the job, right? That is the job. So – the fact that we're on the on site is going to make for a much it changes the whole tone in a lot of ways. And again, last year was great. It was really good spot other than the service elevator, which I never want to look at again ever. Um, but other than that, I, I think we're in a really good position to have a great weekend. I think if you honestly look back at the last couple of years <clears throat> of the world championship, um, you know, Good or bad, depending on however you feel about it, there are certain aspects of every location that just worked well. You know, when we were at the Westgate, we had a ton of space. We had lighting and a stage. You know, it was uh, the first time that we brought mobile and arcade together. So it was just, and plus the Westgate has uh, history uh, with both our company and the industry as a whole. And then, you know, you go and uh, you end up in a place like Notoriety, which is not on you know, it's not like you said, it's not on campus. It's you, you, go, you got to walk, you got to Uber. Uh, downtown Las Vegas is great. It's a lot of fun, but it, it does present its challenges, including that that service elevator and uh, the garbage disposal recycling thing outside. I wasn't going to say it. I will. Like, I, I, I will say uh, it will rem it will go uh, unspoken. Some of the moments <laughs> in that after we after we touch base in Vegas and step on the palms, I want to never bring it up again. No, uh, but yes, it has. But they all have their own quirks. Yes. They all they have their own quirks. They have their pluses, their minuses, whatever the case is. But like you said, you know, going to the, the Palms, the stage got a big relationship with them. Yeah, the stage, right? We did the stage at the Orleans, and um, I love the stage for that. Like we go through cycles, right, of trying different things, and the stage was really cool because it was so different. But you lose a lose a little like closest to the the tournament. It didn't. And I, again, this is all part of like the process. We did this at our trade show, which we we joked about just to get it back up. We we did it on a stage. We we did it at a a bar that we were like exploding out of. Um, so that's, you do all these things, and true. then and then you learn. You say, okay, well, what about this? The, the one thing I never want us to do is just to do the same thing over and over again. Um, and uh, no, I'm I'm I am super excited. I I really am. I'm super excited. I'm really hopeful we can get odds. I mean, we're 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 very transparent. I think about it. We're we're gonna try, and well, and we, we not even that. Out. We are trying. We're actively we're, engaged in conversations. Oh no, it, uh, it's, with it's it, just looking to be clear. good. It's looking good. Like, <laughs> and and it can change. So I, you know, I I'm really, you know, this is more than the fingers crossed. Like the conversations are very good. It's just um, when you talk about having golden tea odds at an event like this, most normal people, understandably, are like, hey, uh, that's awesome, but like. What the fuck? Um, like, you took the, the words literally what, out of my mouth. The, uh, really? Oh, and 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 again, we we've been through that before too. We're kind of pros at it now. So um, no, I'm I am like pumped up. The commentary. Uh, the other thing I'm really pumped up about is mobile and and arcade at the same time present some challenges. But I think the energy in the room is going to be really high, and I think for the mobile guys coming in, 
you're you'll have games being played in the background. You have people watching you. Like I think the energy is going to be this elongated energy that stretches out throughout the weekend even more. I think we're going to have a greater, bigger audience. Um, and uh, no, I'm 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 really excited about it because I think it just changes the whole tone of the event. So uh, yeah, mobile guys. I you know again as we get closer, um, we will definitely do multiple episodes dedicated to each of these fields and get people on that. Uh, know it and understand it and you know a good chunk of next month is going to be dedicated to uh to this event and and both sides of it yeah and, and the other thing too uh you know i kind of subtly announced it while doing uh commentary at, at for the finals matches in st louis with steve sobel but next friday so may 17th we're having an additional money shot qualifying event on commercial games so golden t.com slash locations find your favorite spot take the day off, get off of work early, whatever the case is, but whoever is in the the top of the leaderboard who is unqualified. So they'll, we'll have a big prize pool just like normal for those things. Um, but let's just say I'm not qualified and I get fourth place and like three guys ahead of me are qualified. Well, guess what? I got the spot. You're right. Not me, obviously, because I'll be doing a lot of other things there, but start uh, shit. Some, someday. But, um, you know, it'll be a lot of fun. And, you know, essentially anybody that, drops out between now and next Wednesday, we're going to set up as a commercial money shot opportunity after next Wednesday, the 15th, anything that uh, any players that drop out for any reason, they will get added to the last chance qualifier through target rush on Friday, the 28th in Las Vegas. Um, right now there's two spots on the line that we all, that, you know, right off the top we reserved. Um, and then with, uh, Target Rush will do it similar to closest to the pin. It's going to be double elimination. Uh, with Target Rush being such a quick round, it's going to be best out of three. So best out of three, you know, I win one, Adam wins two, which sounds about right. Looking at this damn list on my whiteboard of uh, I'm still down one game of uh, it's been one, a while one round. We're, we're actually due for that. that we are yeah. long overdue for that. Yeah. You know what? The next next time we do the podcast, before we get into the Vegas oh, involved, we, we should we do We should it. do an active pod where we could just be – in your fucking in in there and 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 recording. That's a good idea. That's, That's perfect. Not, I like that. But uh, yeah, so two spots minimum. But of course, we know family stuff comes up, kids sports, work, yeah. whatever the case is. So I anticipate there being maybe four or so spots. Uh, and I know there's a lot of players I talk to in St. Louis and Wisconsin that we see on social media that are already set up and ready to go. Um, if you are going to go to Vegas just to hang out, have fun, do whatever, uh, you know, reach out to us on social media. We'll get you the link so you can get booked at the Palms and you can be like us. Walk off the ele elevator, you know, throw $100 in the uh, Huff and More Puff machine and then walk right into Huffin the uh, even, Green Street. Even more Puff. Yeah. Yes. Even more Puff. No, I, I, I will say also um, I had not been in the Palms in, in a while. Um, maybe since our Silver Strike Bowling World Championship. 15 years ago, where as I don't think I've told the story where I ran into Cat Williams and and uh, I I did Dennis Hopper. Uh, you've probably oh, heard man. this story. This is a good story. Um, so I had been at IT for God damn, not very long, a month or two, maybe. They trusted um, you to go to Vegas after they just one they month. They trusted me to go to Vegas. <laughs> All they just needed somebody to go to Vegas, probably. And we had it to, at the to Palms. manage Gary. Yeah, the the silver the silver string we had at the Palms, and they got they got a, a, a sweetheart deal on the Kingpin Suite up at the top. Which, by the way, for Worlds we actually looked at. There's no way we could logistically fit all these cabinets and getting 20 um, games to the top of the Palms. Just not great. So it didn't work out. But this is what we did. I think we had four silver string cabinets. So um, I was checking people in at the elevator, and you know, Cat Williams, I saw, right? I, I knew who that was. And then Dennis Hopper, uh, God rest his soul, great in many movies. Speed, though, iconic, yep. um, was was on there. And I'm like, I didn't really recognize him, obviously. And I oh, sir, are you here for the Silver Strike Bowling Tournament? And he's like, what the fuck is that? And just walked away. I, I can and literally like, hear that in what his, the his voice. What the fuck is that? And then, and then I'm like, well, clearly wasn't here for the silver strike bowling tournament but um so i was i was there i was guarding this thing and getting everybody up to the suite and that was my job and then of 
couple of bottles of red wine later. Um, yeah, man, Silver Strike, Silver Strike players a little bit different than Golden Tea players in terms of consumption. However, it was a great event, and the casino is really nice in terms of being at a casino. And this is no knock at the Nor- uh, the Orleans, which I love, by the way. Locals casino spread out, really, really good. This is a this is a really cool venue to hang out, and have a good time. There's great restaurants. Uh, I know a lot of a lot of players have uh, have eaten here in the past when we've gone to Vegas and done Worlds when we haven't done things there. Um, so book that stuff too, by the way, Vegas restaurants and everything fills up. We gotta, we gotta actually do that shit. So, um, yeah, and especially I, because of the fights that weekend. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it, the, the McGregor fight, um, which is going to change the whole scope. Uh, we're not terribly far from T-Mobile arena where that thing is going down. So it's going to yeah, be book fun. Look at the palms to save yourself on expensive ass Ubers. For, for, for sure. No, it's going to, it's going to be a lot of fun. So. Uh, and it, again, it's fast approaching. It's wild. Well, let me do a quick rundown. Um, and, and we'll post this on social media over the weekend, uh, you know, just so everyone gets it. But it, again, it is a four day event because of mobile and arcade. So on June 27th, which is that Thursday, doors are going to open at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, the last chance qualifier for mobile is going to start at noon, as well as the five course qualifier for those that have already qualified. Uh, we're also actually going to open up arcade play at noon on Thursday as well. So it's a perfect excuse for you to save some money on the slots, grab some nice lunch, come in, check out the mobile worlds tournament, play some games, break those track balls in. Cause I don't want to listen to y'all bitch and complain that these are brand new track balls. Uh, and then, uh, and then the, the mobile world championship bracket play is actually going to start at six o'clock that Thursday night, Play a couple of matches that'll get wrapped up. Not the actual championship, but we'll wrap up for Thursday. Doors are going to open at 1030 uh, Pacific on Friday. Mobile championship bracket continues at 11. Open play for arcade at 11. And then at 7 p.m. Pacific, uh, the arcade lands, uh, last chance qualifier with Target Rush is going to begin. Again, these are basically concrete in stone, but uh, you know, just like with anything with event planning, uh, if we have to change it for some reason, we may. But we'll let you guys know. Saturday morning, doors open 10 o'clock. Arcade open play starts at 10 o'clock, 11 a.m. Five course qualifier for the Us. Arcade World Championship. <laughs> uh, at 6 p.m., Andy Coolman is doing his speed run, but this time it's an eight man tournament, single elimination. I actually and, didn't know that, by the way. So, th- this, yes, is this, are you breaking this to me? Now, yes. now, now you can be very honest. You could say, Adam, you should have known about this three fucking months ago. You just are no, oblivious to life. We've, We've talked a little bit about stuff here and there, but what you don't know, and this is also tentative, this is the one piece that is tentative because it requires some work, but there are some rumblings between Andy and I that we would like to try, try being the keyword, and run a doubles tournament on Saturday night, the World Championships. I would love to do that. If Adam and I are not at the UFC event at the T-Mobile Arena, Adam and I, you and I should be grandfathered in as a team because I think that'd be a lot of fun. And just in general, that's going to be open play. So it does. it's not just World's Qualifiers. If you fly out to Vegas, you're having drinks, having a good time, this is going to be open. The nice thing is it's A player, B player. Adam, in this case, is a B player. I am the A player. Not really. It's more it's like fair. B, C, but, <laughs> no, but <laughs> only, because you, orders, only because I'm order not that right. good and you haven't yeah. played that much. But uh, oh. and we're still working out the details on that. But I would really like to do something fun like that. Um, you know, it's something different for the qualifiers and just the people that have, have flown out there to be with us. So I, uh, I'm a huge doubles tournaments. When I think of some of my best, uh, most favorite tournament weekends, doubles has been a huge part of it. It's uh, we, you know, we let the guard down. Um, and Is we it the enjoy- time for the Jamie Nuss story. Oh my God. God. Yeah. We, and, and you know, it's funny. You don't know what's going to happen in doubles tournaments. We've been there. Um, it's no, it's, it's, it's a great format. And it, I, I, as much as I want to be plugged in the Conor McGregor fight, I truthfully would. Um, this sounds fun. I'm in. I, I'm in. No, it, it'll be a lot of fun, and, Andy, and we'll make Andy it, will uh, make sure out. we can watch the Conor McGregor fight somehow in some way, even if it's on his phone. Yeah, um, we will. If watch. It's not 100 percent legal. We'll, yes, uh, we'll figure it out. But uh, and then for Sunday morning, doors are going to open at 10 a.m. Open play is going to start at 10 a.m. and then the silver bracket is going to begin at 11 a.m. and uh, the world championship arcade bracket starting at noon. So it's again, a lot, I didn't plan on running through all that, but no, it's, it's all important. So we'll get that out on 
excuse me, on social media this weekend. And if you have not made plans yet, book your Uber in advance. It's expensive Uber to travel across the country, but if you don't want to fly, don't want to drive, do whatever you got to take uh, or do whatever it takes to get out to Vegas for the world championship. No, I think it's good. We'll, we'll go over the schedule again. We'll talk about anything that changes. Um, but like we're, we are, we're what, six weeks, seven weeks. Um, uh, six. Yeah. I think it's like middle of six. Oh boy. Yeah. Things are going to move fast. Uh, um, it's actually seven. It is actually seven weeks to the day. We will be, uh, well, seven... technically it's seven weeks minus a day by the time people are listening to this on Friday. Yeah. No, that's exciting though. And we'll have a lot of content coming, uh, beforehand about worlds and, uh, and we'll keep you guys posted on the odds part too, because as we get closer to this, we will certainly make a big deal about it. Um, if it's going to happen and we hope it does. It's been yeah. a, it's been a really neat thing uh, to have at these events when when we've been able to have them. So we're hoping that's the case here. Yeah, and on the content front leading up to Worlds, uh, you know, a huge shout out and appreciation to Richard King, who is healthy with two brand new hips. Uh, I believe it was his hips uh, this past weekend in St. Louis, jumping in, uh, helping record Road to Worlds interviews with Andy Coolman and Sean Ringel. Uh, and so our our Andy's kind of like 30 minute preview video of mobile and worlds this year. Uh, those are always great. But they he are even great. said himself between the content that they're recording that weekend, all the stuff that, that Sean and, and Cleo Shine have recorded at the national tournaments. There's a lot of shit that we're going to cram in this 30 minute video. And it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to really highlight all these players uh, in a unique way leading up to the world championship. That's awesome. Um Lots of worlds to come. We will have worlds, uh, dedicated worlds content pretty much every episode. You, you said I lots think, of worlds to come. Is this guaranteeing that we're going to have a world championship in 2030? Can we get this? Um, yeah, uh, dude, few... it, dude, the worlds is, uh, it is critical. Like it is, I, I, it is, we are going to do a worlds. Please don't clip this. I've said things before. I've been, I've, I just, I just, just mark, just, mark the clip. God damn it. <laughs> don't, don't clip it. Uh, delete it. No, no, I, I, you know where I feel about this, man. It, no, it, I just said it's, it's, it, it, no, it's very personal to me. Like, uh, it will go through different iterations and everything else, but it is something that we will obviously make a pointed part of our calendar. Um, so development items. So before we talk new tees, let's talk about next year's, uh, this year's update. I say next year. This year is next year. Well, I think about it. There's years and then golden T years. And I, I, we, it's weird to say that, but anybody knows in terms of what the yearly update uh, can relate. Um, I'm happy to put this out there. We are like, it's pretty much imminent, imminent ish of being able to start really kind of announcing when the updates are coming out. um, And, and then starting to work into the content of what it's going to be. When we started to move worlds to the summer, it's always became kind of tricky to manage content flow of worlds and golden tea stuff. Uh, it makes uh, marketing's life, I think, a lot easier and harder. I say easier because there's always stuff to talk about, right? Right. But there's also a lot of real estate to be shared. So um, we will be sharing a lot of stuff. Really, the kickoff starts in the next couple of weeks. We have a meeting tomorrow uh, to finalize a lot of just different content things. You and I agonize over this content schedule and how we release things um i am uh, we've said it the pod is going to make this stuff a lot easier because we could put stuff out there for a week and then we have a giant net that you and i can talk through and say oh by the way did you see what this and exactly and here's a little here's a little feedback behind it i i think that's where the pod will be um well, viewership will be up right and it'll be fun for us too so it's it's coming we're meeting about tomorrow to start really finalizing things and the only reason we haven't announced it yet is just because when we there's a lot of moving parts multiple platforms, home, commercial, multiple countries. Um, it's really not so much. And and really timing of this is interesting too. I'm a, you know this, I'm a huge fan of uh, NCAA football, the franchise for EA. It's been gone for many years. It's coming back this year. Uh, they're releasing a game in July. It should be Ooh. like July 24th. There's been like nothing. There's been a trailer that, that you have not seen a, a, a thing. And I find it absolutely fascinating considering it's two months away. So and it's been gone for so long. It's, it's been gone for so long. And I don't think they need to do any runway. We're all going to buy it anyways. But I, I, it's really interesting. There's no blueprint to do this right. But I do, uh, for, for you and I, it's always been fun, this process, because the morsels have always meant something to us. 
when we were with the company, when we were with the company, and uh, and that stuff starts soon, right? So any any other things to add other than like get ready because the content's going to start flowing. No, and I've done this a little bit over the weekend because people were jokingly jacking me, but but I can confirm that it is going to be called Golden T twenty twenty five. Uh, is that is correct, right? Just for everybody that's yeah, listening, yes. it's not going to be Golden T 2024, 2025. I got a few of those over the weekend. Uh, and I said, no, I think we're going back to just four digits uh, to representing the year, but uh, like classic Golden T. Well, and it's uh, it's tricky too. We've gone, we've moved our calendar around. You never want it to sound old, um, but this is just a simple and easy way to do it. This was a, a pretty easy decision uh, when we actually looked at it. So yes. That's that is the name. We can confirm that. That is um, everyone else in development right now is just like God damn. No, no, they know too. I hope. Otherwise, we got problems. Um, so that stuff will come. And let's talk new tees. A new club pass. Um, look, I am happy now. When we built PGA Tour, and we built a new tee mechanism, like we built a new tee system. Where Good we catch, can by do- the way. It's it's I you got know, it. I, it's it's now I, I got it. I, I'm trained. Um, we really redid all of our markers, and we stumbled along the way because it was hard. There's so many courses. We're talking about I, I don't even know how many com- millions of combinations, but tens of thousands of active things that we were trying to utilize. And when we rebuilt the markers, going back a year, it was it was difficult to get this thing right. To my knowledge, and you can just completely punch me in the face right now. It's been pretty good marker wise. Yeah. That's it. No, I, yeah, that's, it's been great. Okay. That's okay. the end of the podcast. There we go. <laughs> well, you didn't say it very happy. It's no, like, it's, I, it's I was like, just, pulling yes, up. it's great, but your dog died. Like that's no, what like. no, I'm just, I'm just pulling up our favorite place. Golden T fan just to oh. see, cause I, I haven't been tagged in anything negative, which is always great. Um, but even just looking at some of the shots of the week, and it's funny, I've been like distracted, wh- like listening to you talk because I'm watching uh, was uh, Elaine's talk, records right? on your machines and then also the uh, shots of the week playing in the background. But, you know, Bonnie Moore 18, uh, Bonnie Moore Black 18 is is a night like as a fun tee box um, where instead of having the straight on look that you had mm-hmm. in season six or the offset kind of the classic Bonnie yeah. Moore look of season five. It's kind of in the middle now. So you got to choose between, uh, you know, kind of hooking in a, a C3 or hoping and praying that you hit it over the uh, kind of like the the brick perimeter of those buildings. Um, so the, though those are some of the, the holes that stand out to me. Um, but there's a ton of them. Again, uh, there's only so many games you can play in a day or when time allows. And um, that's what I, I stressed to everybody over the weekend is, hey, I get it. You watched my, you know, nine hole esque preview, nine fifteen holes, whatever it was. That is a subset of a subset of a subset of the tees and pins that you're going to possibly see with the new, uh, the new season. And and for the most part, people have said, "Hey, you know what? I'm not going to change back to stouts on on all these courses. I might use them on a few of them." Um, versus everyone when said, "Oh, the you know, they're just going to randomize the tees back to what they look like before." Some of that happened. Some of those tee box and pins, nobody wants to admit it. But if you actually, you know, in our debug tools, looked at it, they're different pin spots. Sometimes they end up closer than others, but there some holes really change. There's par fives that are now drivable par fours. There's a par four that is a uh, a par three now. There's a lot of that uh, that I think sometimes gets overlooked. Well, it's also like, I think part of the coolness of this is that if everything was so radically different, it wouldn't, um, it would be different. But I think there's like the anticipation and some designs, by the way, don't warrant uh, or can't um, actually can't accommodate that many different looks. It's actually something we talked to Jim about uh, quite a bit, but um, it's I think it's neat. I, I love what I love. And we have a new course coming, by the way. We, we'll talk about that next week. New old course, but a new course um, that we have content, meaningful content here still in May for this update. And that is the part of this that's been awesome. And the club pass stuff is really cool too. Um, and I was not able to finish last season, by the way, I, I'm, I will, well, this, that, that's, I have no excuses <laughs> now. I got the damn game right here. I have no excuses. Yeah. I'm going to finish the season and I want to finish it by worlds. 
If you have to um, start taking calls while playing a game, and I did just, that. You know, I did that, and actually, uh, the people who were on the call with uh, were like, "What is that? Well, I, it must be interference." Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's buddy. when you do it on your phone and you just hit mute as you're hitting the trackball. I did talk to my wife the other day. Are, she, are you playing Golden T? Yeah, she knows. After many years, phone calls, uh, trackball, like oh, no, I thought, no, I thought oh, no. she, I thought you meant she just randomly asked you that. Like, are you playing? Oh more no, Golden she can T? hear. She can hear the sound. Yeah, like, it, you, you know she. You know, after many if you make years, the mistake of putting that phone on the trackball, you hear that that whizzing of the the rollers yeah. a lot. So I uh, no, it's I love the new tees. I love Club Pass. I love that the variety it adds, and um, no, it's cool. I I'm excited. I. There's stuff, and I don't play nearly the same amount, but there's some holes that I've played already where it's like, oh, my God, that's way different. And, uh, no, it's it's exciting. So we've got, um, we got obviously, plenty plenty to do and plenty to talk about. Yeah, we do have a new course, and it is coming. Hold on. It's a piece of paper. May 27th. That's soon, and it's one of my favorite courses ever. Kangaroo Trail. There's been a 35 under on that course. Yeah, Jim. 35 under before tees. Before tees. So we'll see what there is. So, um, yes, new tees. Go play if you haven't already. Go enjoy them. Last but not least, it's it's your floor. Yeah, so some, some fun and exciting news. Didn't leak it at all this weekend. I was very proud of myself. Nobody asked me anything. But uh, for those of you that have been around Golden Tee for at least a couple of years, uh, Travis Tressler who has been, uh, you know, a mainstay in the community for a while, worked with on the marketing team before, uh, you know, leaving a couple of years ago, is actually rejoining next Wednesday, so uh, that Mar that May 15th. And so he's going to be our community and promotion specialist, uh, doing a little bit of work with the community, social media marketing, but also really helping our operators step up their promotions game, whether it's, you know, monthly contests where they're giving away gift cards at their locations or you know even for us running home edition contests or national contests with our new score at software and a little bit of everything in between so uh you know he's always been uh you know held in high you know high regards internally uh you know left on really good terms and the stars just kind of aligned over the last couple of months that you know, he's been building our Freaky Friday courses with Sean Rangel for a while now and been helping us out. And, you know, what started as kind of like a pipe dream, tongue in uh, cheek joke, uh, you know, you and I spoke and it was like, well, shit, hold on. Like there might be some some real opportunity here with everything we've got going on, all the momentum and sales, you know, the new update coming out. Uh, and so it, it, it feels like it'll be it'll be really a really good time. I think um, one of the things I'll say, first off, I'm a. I love Travis, um, and uh, even to see him like be passionate about Golden Tee after he left, uh, which was cool, and 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 that's not needed. It's just something he likes to do, right? So um, we have always been, you know, especially in marketing to a degree. Uh, there's a lot of connection. If you have a connection to the product, we want to hear what you have to say. But with Travis specific to events. Um, one of the things that I think will become evident both in this update and beyond is our commitment to promotions, tournaments. Obviously, with the score and stuff you mentioned, we're really excited about giving operators more tools to run events that players, who I think largely listen to this, will benefit from. Uh, we're committing to this ourselves, and I think and, and want to give more tools as well um, to the players to do this. And uh, I think the hope is that Travis. Uh, Doing so is time consuming, right? And so over the course of my existence and yours at IT, you know, we've never had someone dedicated to facilitating these conversations. We have dedicated our time. We've dedicated a lot of time to facts and, and help and everything, but where we can actually be on the aggressive when it comes to this stuff. And Travis is just a natural fit to do it. So great guy. Uh, loves Golden Tea, plays Golden Tea, is doing this stuff long before it was a job. Uh, I'm excited about it. I think the benefit to the community as well. Uh, and I think a good chunk of the community uh, <laughs> knows and appreciates Travis, which is awesome. Uh, yeah. I, think it, I think it's going to be great. And I think, again, it's all to help facilitate um, more people, more players, more contests, more competition. I mean, that really is the, the origin of what he will do first and foremost. 
no, it, it, it'll be a lot of fun. And, you know, don't do it until Wednesday the 15th. But starting Wednesday the 15th, you can start tagging Travis instead of just me. Uh, you know, oh, I think uh, I won't. That's fucking I won't, mean. Th- no, it's okay. I only say it because his name is not very obvious on Facebook. But I will, by Friday, by next Friday, he's getting a Golden Tee fan post announcing this. Hey, welcome back, buddy. And then I'm going to exit Golden Tee fan very suddenly. Uh, and then, uh, you know. Then you do a podcast. And that, yeah. that's your that's your communication. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. But, which I <laughs> you know, it's actually it, funny, but it is kind of true. No, I mean, we get to speak our piece. But it's just. It's different now. Um, no, it'll be good to have. It, it'll be really good to have him uh, back. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see, forty-five minutes about about right. Yeah, Lo- looked like about an eighteen-minute episode on on the schedule. You and I. <laughs> I looked at. Pool. I looked a few minutes ago and it said thirty minutes. I said, "Oh, this might be short," and here we are. You know, fifteen minutes later, but that's how it works. You know. Yeah, we'll start to talk a little bit about. Um, kangaroo next week um which is fun again like uh, a really you know more content coming we'll talk some some new stuff with uh 2025 as well and we'll do our worlds and whatever else comes up i'm sure there'll be more stuff there'll be um, a lot of bullets that'll show up on that list oh yeah oh for sure so uh with that uh and money shot too by the way just as, <laughs> as a quick reminder may 17th is that the yes, day friday okay. may 17th Friday, May 17th. Get your a ass week out from there. the time you're listening or watching this podcast. The, on top of this, the winner of this contest, I will buy a bucket of beers for. Okay. I'm going to throw there in you an go. extra Adam Kramer bounty with not, his personal credit with my card, personal not the card, company credit. Uh, an extra Adam Kramer bounty of bucket O beers of your choosing. And don't be an asshole. Don't be like bucket of something <laughs> like insane. But I thought you were talking to me. I was like, I thought my joke was funny, but you know. No, 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 not you. <laughs> Although it's funny that you would take it away. Not you. No, you're I'm fine. Not... Oh. <laughs> so outfitting across the board. All right. Yeah. We're, we're, we're getting out of here. We will talk to you guys next week. <laughs>